Here at SpaceX, we believe that in order to achieve our goals of making humanity multiplanetary, it is essential to create a team with diverse backgrounds and cultures. As we remember Dr. King's legacy this weekend, I hope that we can keep working towards furthering equality every day of the year. Now back to the mission at hand at T minus 13 minutes and counting. All systems are currently go for an on-time liftoff. The vehicle is nearly fully loaded with propellants and will complete at T minus two minutes. The range is also green and ready to support. If for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Now at just under T minus 13 minutes, let's take a closer look at the Falcon Heavy vehicle that you see there on your screen. Falcon Heavy is essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together, which means it can carry much larger payloads, not only to Earth orbit, but to the Moon and Mars as well. Now, like Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy is a two-stage launch vehicle. Now, the big difference is that Falcon Heavy, the Falcon Heavy first stage is comprised of three cores, whereas Falcon 9 only has one. Falcon Heavy has 28 engines in total, each of these cores has nine M1D engines, making for a total of 27 engines across all three boosters, which you can see there on your screen. The 28th engine is a Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage and will power the payload to its final targeted orbit. Now, all together, the Merlin 1D engines at the base of Falcon Heavy produce 5 million pounds of thrust. That's equal to 18 747s at takeoff. Now, in fact, the engines produce so much power that we don't run them at full thrust all at once until after liftoff. About two and a half minutes into flight, the two side boosters will separate from the center core and come back down to Earth for simultaneous landings at landing zone one and landing zone two, which you can see there on your screen. If successfully recovered, these side boosters will be refurbished and used in a future national security space launch. Now, upon side booster separation, the center core will keep firing for about 90 seconds before shutting down its engines and then perform a standard stage separation from the second stage. We will not be attempting to land our center core today as the mission requires more performance. Now, this means that in order to get our payload to where it needs to go for today's mission, the center core will burn the fuel that would, we would typically use for recovery. And for those of you looking closely, that is why you don't see any landing legs or grid fins on the center core. Now moving towards the top of the vehicle, once the first and second stage separate, the second stage will propel our payload to its intended orbit. At our customer's request, we will not be showing views of stage two, so immediately after the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage fires up, we'll, we'll be directing all of our attention to the landing of our side boosters. Now above the second stage is where our payload is safely enclosed inside of the fairing that's at the very top of the rocket there on your screen. The fairing protects the payload from aerothermal loads, heating and contamination during ascent. Now once we reach the vacuum of space, we will jettison the fairing as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. And we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our recovery vessel, Bob. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today's launch, USSF-67, is a national security space launch mission for the United States Space Force. Now, let's learn a bit more from our customer about today's mission. We depend on space every day to support our way of life, our supply chain, financial systems, weather tracking and power grids, as well as air, land and maritime infrastructure. Our U.S. military is the strongest and best equipped force in the world. In the heavily contested space domain, Space Systems Command leads a team of roughly 15,000 guardians, airmen, civilians and contractors. Headquartered in El Segundo, California, our unbeatable team operates from multiple locations across the U.S. and includes two Space Launch Deltas, SLD-45 at Patrick Space Force Base and SLD-30 at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Through unity of effort across the space acquisition enterprise, Space Systems Command delivers to warfighters integrated and resilient space capabilities through five program executive offices. 
assured access to space, procures launch services, and delivers on-orbit capabilities faster and more frequently than ever before, while sustaining ranges for the United States Space Force and commercial partners. Battle Management Command, Control, and Communication delivers tactical and operational command and control capabilities to warfighters, facilitating timely and quality battle space decisions for the joint all-domain fight. Space Domain Awareness and Combat Power maximizes the full characterization of space using a wide range of multi-domain assets by rapidly detecting potential and real threats to our nation and allies which enables decisive action in the space domain. Communications and positioning, navigation and timing ensures the delivery of resilient capabilities across the acquisition life cycle from prototypes to systems on the production line to systems our warfighters have been operating for years. Space sensing delivers space-based battle space awareness through missile warning, tracking, environmental monitoring, and tactical intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Our adversaries fully intend to disrupt, degrade, and destroy the U.S. and our allies' ability to access and operate in space. Not on our watch. Space Systems Command is focused on creating and sustaining resilient lethality in space through systems integration, unity of effort, and digital engineering ecosystems. At Space Systems Command, space starts here. At T minus six minutes and 45 seconds, the SpaceX team continues to count down for launch of our fourth operational Falcon Heavy flight, and all systems are go. Following a successful static fire this past Tuesday, Falcon Heavy rolled out to the pad with the payload at 5.45 a.m. and went vertical about four and a half hours later. Now, before we began the webcast, the SpaceX launch NY director... Booster, RP1 load is complete. The SpaceX launch director pulled the members of the launch team and got a go for propellant loading and launch. Now, we're currently loading propellant on all three first stage boosters as well as the second stage. Now you may be able to hear the live rocket sounds from our launch pad. The pops and hissing sounds that you hear are from propellant loading as well as the launch mount and strong back that the propellant is going through. Falcon Heavy uses two propellants, a refined form of kerosene called RP-1 or Rocket Propellant 1 as a fuel and LUX or liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. Now, an oxidizer is a type of chemical that a fuel requires in order to burn. The liquid oxygen is chilled below its boiling point so that it has a much greater amount of mass per volume. So basically, we can load more of it into the vehicle. Our fuel is RP-1, essentially a purified kerosene. It is safe, easily available, and has a lot of history. And in fact, the Saturn V first stage flown from this very pad on the moon missions also use liquid oxygen and kerosene. And in addition to these two propellants, we also use the chemical TTEB or triethyl aluminum and triethyl borane as an ignition source. The combustion of RP-1 and liquid oxygen is what makes the rocket go and it's the T-TEB that sets the match to the propellant mix. Now next up, the trusted structure next to the vehicle. Tanks are pressing for a strong back retract. And there's that call out just in time. The structure next to the vehicle is called the strong back or the TE. And in preparation for retraction, the clamp arms will begin to open. There's clamp arms that just there that you can see on your screen below the fairing. Those will begin to open up, and once they are fully open, back retract in progress. Once they are fully open, then the TE or the transporter rector can begin to retract away from the vehicle. And we did hear that call out that the TE retraction process has begun. Now, as I mentioned earlier, today's launch marks our second Falcon Heavy flight in just 11 weeks. And for those of you following along, a lot will happen in the first four minutes of flight. And there you can see on your screen that the clamp arms have begun to open. Once those are fully open, the TE can begin to retract away from the vehicle. Now again, a lot will happen in the first four minutes of flight. First, we will light the two side boosters, followed NY by... Booster locks load is complete. Followed by the center core. 
Then about 40 seconds after liftoff, we will decrease power on the two side boosters to prepare for max Q, after which Falcon Heavy will throttle back up to full power on the side boosters. Now two minutes into flight, we will- Wide booster lock float is complete. Two minutes into flight, we will again reduce thrust on the two side boosters, this time to decrease forces on the rocket structure as the vehicle is now much lighter, but thrust is constant. The two and a half minutes into flight, we will fully turn off the side boosters with booster engine cutoff, or what we call BECO. The pneumatic separation Center system. Core, lock load complete. Getting good calls. I'm going to pause for, for each one of those. The pneumatic separation system on the center core then unlocks the two side boosters and pushes them away. Now, once we clear, once we are clear of the side boosters, the center core throttles up to full power until the center core shuts down with main engine cutoff, or what we call MECO, and then st separates from the second stage around the four minute mark. And as a reminder, we will not be attempting to recover the center core today as the mission requires more performance more performance. Now, for those of you looking closely, this is why you don't see any landing legs or grid fins on the center core. And from this point on, very similar to Falcon 9, to a Falcon 9 mission, the side boosters will be making their way back down to Earth for recovery. The fairing will separate and the second stage will take the USSF 67 payload out into space. Now, as a reminder, at the request of our customer, we will not be showing views of the payload, so we will be ending the webcast just after our side Stage boosters. Two, lock load complete. Just after our side boosters make their way back down to land on landing zone one and landing zone two, a little after the T plus eight minute mark into flight. And as we've mentioned before, launch is hard and Falcon Heavy is no exception. We are essentially counting down three rockets simultaneously, so our team is going to be conservative in case anything pops up in the last couple minutes of the countdown. Now, if for some reason we don't launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. And we did also hear those call outs that propellant loading is now complete on Falcon Heavy. All right, guys, close outs. So we are now going to vent out the liquid oxygen line on the transporter erector. Next up will be Falcon in Falcon Heavy in startup. And that will be at the T minus one minute mark. That's where the internal flight computers take over the launch countdown. Falcon Heavy is in startup. And great news, Falcon Heavy, now in startup. We're now just waiting for the final call from the launch director. This is the mission director, go for launch. And excellent news, all systems are go for launch of Falcon Heavy with USSF 67. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, engine full power, and lift off of USSF 67. Go Falcon Heavy, go Space Force. T plus 40 seconds into flight under the power of 5 million pounds of thrust. Power and telemetry nominal. Falcon Heavy is headed to space. Now we did throttle down the engines around the T plus 40 second Vehicle mark. supersonic. In preparation for max Q. Max Q. And great call out there that we have passed through max Q. That's the largest mechanical stress on the vehicle on ascent. And incredible, incredible views there on your screen. Falcon Heavy in flight. 
Now, next events coming up will be booster engine cutoff or BECO, followed by separation of the side boosters and followed by their side booster boost back burns. And then will be center core main engine cutoff or what we call MECO. Again, those events coming up here just under a minute away. That will be BECO. That's where the booster, the side boosters engines will shut down. The center core will push those side boosters away from the vehicle. Then those two side boosters can begin to make their way back down to earth with their boost back burns. And on your right hand screen, you could see the views from each of those side boosters. Really incredible views here. Again, we will have Biko, side booster, boost back burn, followed by main engine cutoff of the center core here in just a few seconds. Side booster separation. Side core booster startup. Incredible views. We just had Biko and separation of the side boosters. And you can see on your left hand screen that the side boosters have lit back up. They are now in their boost back burn, making their way back down to earth. Now those side boosters are returning to Florida under the power of three engines. That's three of the nine M1D engines. Next up will be the conclusion. Next up will be the conclusion of those side booster boost back burns, followed by Miko on the center core, as well as stage separation of the center core and the second stage, and then SES one or second stage engine start one. Now, as I mentioned previously, per the request of our customer, we won't be showing second stage views after SES one. And additionally, our center core or stage one is expendable today, so we will not be attempting to recover that vehicle, but we should have some great views like we are seeing right side now. Core, boost back, shut down. We should have some great views of those side boosters touching down for landing. We go. Stage separation confirmed. And that start. And excellent views. We had the shut Stage one FTS to say has saved. We did have the shutdown Acquisition of the boost the back burn. We did have the shutdown of the boost back burns on the side boosters as well as Miko on that center core and stage separation. We are waiting for confirmation of a call out of the fairing separation. All vehicles are following nominal trajectories. So currently stage two is still making its way to its targeted drop off orbit while the boost, the side boosters are making their way back down to land. Again, these side boosters have another burn coming up. That will be the entry burn. That will be three of nine M1D engines reigniting. That helps to slow the boosters down in preparation or as they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. We got some views here from those side boosters there on your screen. Now at the time of separation, the side boosters were traveling slow enough to turn around and make their way 
back to land to our side-by-side -side landing pads. If we have successful landings today, we'll mark the 163rd and 164th landing of an orbital class rocket. As I mentioned earlier, the center core it will be expendable and we are not attempting to recover it today. Side core entry burn startup. And there you can see on your screen, the entry burns for these side boosters have begun. They're just about 12 seconds long. PY FTS has saved and NY FTS has saved. And the entry burns for both side boosters have now concluded. Now next up will be the final burn for each of these side boosters. That is the landing burn. It is just a single engine burn, the center E9 engine. Each one of these M1D engines have about 190,000 pounds of thrust. So that is enough to slow the vehicle down just in time for landing. And you can see the coast of Florida in the background. But boosters are transonic. Now that landing burn coming up here in just about 20 seconds or so. Landing burn will last about 20 seconds long. Again, we are scheduled to land on landing zone one and landing Bruce zone two. Landing burn. And there are those landing burns have begun on the side boosters. So let's watch as they touch down. Stage two is on thermal guidance. Stage two FTS is saved. Booster landing leg deploy. Incredible sight to see as we watch the Both side boosters touch down for landing. That confirms successful landing of both Falcon Heavy side boosters on landing zone one and landing zone two. Now with these two side boosters, this marks the 163rd and 164th overall successful landing of an orbital class rocket. It's also the 25th landing on landing zone one and the sixth landing on landing zone down. two. And with successful confirmation of our side boosters landing, that will bring today's webcast to a close. Insertion. Now, we'd like to thank the United States Space Force for entrusting us with today's mission. Thank you to the Range and the Federal Aviation Administration for licensing today's launch. And we'd like to thank all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. Now, if you're interested, head over to our website and social media platforms for updates on our next missions and milestones. We hope that you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. And we'll see you again soon.